in a video, I think the video before last, we talked about the optimal tax on pollution. Now let's discuss the optimal tax on non-abatement. So we have this diagram in the upper right from last time. Abatement. Uh, dollars per unit of abatement. Now I want to ask what does the MEC curve look like? Now from a long time ago, and for a long time, we've been drawing MEC curves like this, where output was on the horizontal axis. So in this kind of diagram, as you go to the right, you get more output, you get more pollution, you have more marginal external cost. This was some dollars per unit. So th those were in the models where there was no abatement possible. So again, as you go to the right, you get more output, therefore you get more pollution. And when you get more pollution, you have a higher MEC. Now, if I want to draw the MEC curve in this diagram, how do I do that? The same principle holds. Where you get more pollution, you get higher MEC. In this diagram, though, more pollution is this area where abatement is small. See, this area has abatement close to zero, so small abatement, and small abatement means less, uh, s small abatement means lots of pollution. So we use the same principle we used before. But I I'll write that down, which is that more pollution should lead to higher MEC. But now, in this diagram, more pollution is on the left, so we need to have higher MEC on the left. And therefore, the right way to draw the MEC curve in these diagrams is this way. And at some point, I don't know, maybe it's here, that's the zero pollution level, where, where MEC would be zero, because... Um, because there's no pollution, and so there are no, no external costs. Uh, okay, I take that back. Um, external costs would be zero. Marginal external costs are not necessarily zero uh, at the zero pollution level. So, in other words, we could we could have a marginal external cost at the zero pollution level that was strictly positive. But in any case, the MEC curve is downward sloping. The, the MEC curve is downward sloping if you have abatement on the horizontal axis for the same reason that it was upward that it was upward sloping when we had output on the horizontal axis. So I know this is tricky. Uh, that's why I wanted to spend some time on it. Next, I want to draw in the MAC curve, which is which I already drew as a function of abatement, so I'm just copying what I had before. MAC. I claim that the socially optimal level of abatement is here, A star. Uh, let's think about why. I want to cl claim that A1 is not, society wouldn't want the A1 level of abatement. And that's because if society was at A1, marginal external costs are pretty high. They're way up here. Actually, let me draw that in a different color so we can see it a little better. Marginal external costs are pretty high. They're way up here. And you can alleviate those external costs by engaging in abatement 
and abatement's pretty cheap. It's down here. So A1 is an insufficiently small level of abatement. I next want to argue that society would not want to be at a point like A2. Now, a point like A2 is pretty good for the environment. External costs are quite low at A2. But in order to get the external cost to be that low, the abatement cost that you have to incur is really high. So A2 represents a level of abatement that's too high, and A1 represents a level of abatement that's too low. Basically, when the MEC curve is above the marginal abatement cost curve, you're having really high external costs, and abatement is cheap, you ought to abate some more. But where the marginal external cost curve is below the marginal abatement cost curve, then the external costs are really not low, but, but you're paying a whole lot of money to alleviate them. That's not the best place either. So the best place to be is where the marginal abatement cost curve intersects the marginal external cost curve, which is at A star. And then we can use this diagram to ask, now that the government has decided that A star is where it wants the firm to go, how is the government going to get the firm to go there? Again, one method is command and control. The government could just pass a law saying it's illegal to abate less than A star. But the other way through an economic incentive instrument is to impose a tax on non-abatement. And we want a tax on non-abatement that's going to induce the firm to say, well, in response to that particular tax, that level, I'm going to pick A star. And we know from this diagram how to set the tax on non-abatement in order to get the firm to produce A star. You just you start at A star. You go uh, up to the MAC curve, and then you go over. Remember, the firm doesn't care about MEC. The firm couldn't care less about MEC, but the firm cares about MAC because that's money coming out of its pocket. So you go to from A star to, to from A star to the MAC curve and over, and that is the socially optimal tax on non-abatement. All right, so that's the way, this is the way that the social planner would set the tax. The title of this video here is Two Polluting Firms, because we're now going to to describe a situation where there are two polluting firms, not just one. And it's going to go something like this. We're going to have abatement. And dollars per unit of abatement. Let's suppose uh, we'll have zero pollution. Uh, it's not going to be particularly important, but zero pollution over here. So we ignore everything to the right of zero pollution. And the purpose of this two polluting firm diagram is to contrast command and control, which is going to use a pollution standard. On the one hand, with tax on non-abatement, on the other hand. So I'm going to call S2. I'm going to call the pollution standard S2. So the standard is what the government would use if it was using command and control. In other words, the government would pass a law saying 
abating less than A2 is illegal. And there are no incentives for the firm to abate more than S2. So the consequence of that law, which is a version of command and control, is that each of the two firms will choose to go to S2 level of abatement. Next, draw, I'm going to draw level S1 to the left of S2. I'm going to measure the distance between S1 and S2, and then draw a level S3 to the right of S2 so that the distance between S2 and between S1 and S2 is exactly the same as the distance between S2 and S3. I'm not sure how accurately I did that. Let me just check. Yeah, it's it's pretty good. Next, I'm going to let's see. I'm going to suppose that the optimal tax on non-abatement is this. So let me draw that. Okay, that wasn't uh, my ruler slipped. And now I'm going to suppose that the marginal abatement cost curves for the two firms look as follows. So I'm, what's very important in this story is that the two firms have different marginal abatement cost curves. If they had identical marginal abatement cost curves, then it's really kind of like having one firm. And we've already analyzed the one firm case. So I'm going to draw M, the, the marginal abatement cost curve for firm one, starting at the origin, which is here, and then going through the point above S1. Oops. Okay. That's a little weird. Ugh. Let me stop that. All right. One note was kind of acting up there. I drew this line, I drew this line, and I drew this dotted line. So the first one that I drew is MAC1, and the second one, uh, so I'm going to call this MAC3, just like I call, um, just like I call this S3. But there are only two firms. One of them is S1, and one of them is firm one, and one of them is firm three. Now, you're, th this is related to a graph in your textbook, which is box 12.2 on page 168. But your textbook has three firms. And it's not necessary to have three firms. It, it's simpler to have two firms, and all you need is two firms. So that's what I'm going to do. So given close this over here let me do that all right given this tax on non abatement we know from this diagram here how to determine what the firm does 
the firm, you start with the tax on non-abatement, you go over to the MAC curve and down, and that tells you how much the firm abates. So in the left-hand diagram, if there's a tax on non-abatement, you get the amount of abatement from firm one by starting with the tax on non-abatement, going to the MAC curve and down, and firm one abates S1. You get the tax, the, the amount of not the amount of abatement by firm two. Well, we call it firm three by starting with the tax on abatement, going to firm three's MAC curve and down. So firm three engages in S two S three units of abatement. So if you have a tax on non abatement, I'll write this down. If you have a tax on non-abatement, then abatement is S1 for firm 1 and S3 for firm 3. If you have the standard, which is this command and control technique, then it's illegal for the firms to abate less than S2 and pointless for the firms to abate more than S2 because that would just cost them extra money. And so each firm would choose to abate at S2 and the total abatement would be S2 plus S2. Now, I want to ask, what I have tried to do is construct this diagram so that these two numbers are identical. Let me show that. Remember that the diagram is constructed so that the gap between S3 and S2 is the same as the gap between S2 and S1. Write that with algebra. So you write that with algebra, you have S3 minus S2, which is this length, equal to S2 minus S1, which is this length. Add S1 to both sides of the equation. So you get S1 plus S3 minus S2 equals S2. So what I did was I added, oh well, you add S1 to both sides. And now, add S2 to both sides. So you get S1 plus S3 equals S2 plus S2. This is 3. Now that is the same as this claim that S1 plus S3 is the same as S2 plus S2. So I've proven the claim. In other words, the way I've drawn this particular diagram results in the amount of abatement under the tax being the same as the amount of abatement under the standard. So the government has two options. It can regulate pollution using a standard, or it can regulate pollution using a tax on non-abatement. And in the diagram that I've just drawn, the amount of abatement in bo for both of those two choices is exactly the same. It's natural then to think, well, if the amount of abatement is the same, then what's the difference between 
between imposing a standard here, just the old command and control approach, and both firms go to S2, or doing this more modern thing of imposing a tax, and one firm goes to S1 and one firm goes to S3. Non-economists tend to look at this and say, well, if the amount of abatement's the same either way, then who cares? And indeed, the government doesn't care. I mean, the environment doesn't care which one is undertaken because the amount of abatement's the same, whether you go the tax route or the standard route. But what I'm going to show in the next video is that even though the amount of abatement is the same, the cost is different. That one of, that you get the same abatement either with the tax or with the standard, but one of them is cheaper. And so if you have the same abatement with either the tax or the standard, but one of them is cheaper, then of course the better thing to do is to go with whichever one is cheaper. So what we'll do in the next video is figure out which is cheaper, the standard or the tax, in this diagram.